Uh, if you'll turn to, or we'll put it up on the overhead, Romans 10, 13. Whoever, how many of y'all are whoever? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, and, and you want to remember that calls part, you know, because a lot of people know about God, but you've got to call on Him, and to call on Him, you have to know Him. You have to be calling to get to know Him. Lord, I want to know You, and I want You to be part of my life, okay? And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is salvation, and, and uh, I want to talk about that word save for just a minute, and uh, we've got a slide. Seeing's better than hearing. Is that right? Everybody agree with that? picture's worth a whole lot of words, especially if they're empty words. But uh, if you'll put the first slide up on that PowerPoint, there it is. And uh, I'm very absent-minded these days, and uh, I forgot to bring my pointer. If anybody has a laser pointer, I'd sure like to have it. You got one? Oh, yeah, let me have that. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. I hope I don't hit the wrong button and mess up the overhead. The big one that says laser. I, I got it. I got it. I didn't, I didn't even think about this one, and I use it all the time when we're turning the thing on. But uh, anyway, what we're going to talk about today is saved, and that the Greek word for it don't work for me. Yeah, it does. You just got to mash it hard. The Greek word for saved is sozo, and actually it's, it's uh, pr pronounced like that, but it's got a D in it, so it's sozo. And, and the definition is, is multiple of, of this word. I got slaved there. Who typed that? Janice, did you do that? Salved. Salved. I salved? Okay. Well, it's supposed to be saved, okay? I'm not the best typer in the world, and I don't always remember to go back and proof everything. I did spell check it, though. But anyway, uh, the, the multiple definitions are to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. Anybody face any of that ever to any time? To save one from suffering, from perishing. To preserve one in danger of destruction. Uh, you know, God doesn't always jerk us out of things, but, but he'll get us through them, okay? To deliver from the penalty of judgment. How many of you like that one? Huh? That's one of my favorite parts. And here's the best one, though, really. To make one whole in spirit, soul, and body. And, and we need to know that as we go through this study today, and it, and it is a study, uh, but, and I'm going to show you some, some other slides in, in a minute, but first we'll want to go to uh, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that we're sinners. Does somebody have to tell you that you've sinned? Do you have to see it anywhere? I mean, is there anybody in here that has never sinned? Please raise your hand. You know, we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And that's the prerequisite for getting saved, is to know that you need to be saved because you've sinned. Amen? Uh, look at uh, John 2, 24 and 25. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. Okay? If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And I think we're going to go back later and we're going to study some about the beginning, okay? Because I'm not sure that we realize all the time where the beginning was. Uh, but uh, we're not today. And this is the promise that He promised us eternal life. This is the promise that He promised us eternal life. Okay? Uh, John 5, 12. And this is, this is a great scripture. I refer to this many times and, I, and it, this, is, this is the one that really lets us know. It says, He who has the Son has life. That's not the right one. 1 John 
5.12. Try that. I'm sorry. Oh, that is 5.12. What is that? Oh, go to 13. Go to 13 if you can. I'm, I put down the wrong one. Y'all forgive me. 13. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Uh, these things I have written, there it is, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. We are not supposed to have to guess. We are not supposed to have to wonder. We are not supposed to have to live in fear or doubt or intimidation or anything else. We can know that we have eternal life. And sad to say, there's a lot of people, uh, as I try to witness to people and talk to them about God and and you ask them if they're saved and if they know what you mean, sometimes, most of the time, a lot of the times, they say, well, I think so, or I hope so, or I'm trying to be. And, uh, but God says we can know that we have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Well, see, God is eternal. How many of you know God's eternal? Uh, how many of you know salvation's eternal? Well, there's a problem with most of our eternals because most of us, when we think eternal, we think from here forward, don't we? Well, eternal is not just from here forward. Eternal is eternal. Eternal is from no beginning to no end. Amen? And uh, so in order for us to get a real perspective of that, I'm going to show you some more scriptures in a minute, but, uh, but you remember when Moses asked God his name? What did God say? He said, I am that I am. I am that I am. Uh, he was saying, I'm eternal. Because wherever you are, God am. Okay? However old you are, God was before you. Far back as you can go, God was. He was there. He's here now. Wherever we're going down the future, however far, He's there. He's eternal. He's without beginning and without end. And, uh, and I want to indelibly put that into your mind. Uh, uh, but, but first I want to I go through some scriptures that will help put that indelibly into your mind. Uh, there, there's a scripture in, in Revelations that, that is a phrase that, that you're all familiar with, probably. And, and it's only in the Bible five times. And, and all five times are in Revelations, okay? And the first, and, and it's, it's, it's repeated by several different entities, different, different uh, beings. So I'm going to go through those real quickly uh, just so you get firmly implanted that God is eternal. And I know you know it, but you got to know it, okay? you got you got to realize it to, to catch this word. So Revelations uh, 1, 4. Uh, John talking to the churches uh, which are in Asia. And uh, he says, Grace and peace from Him who is, who was, and who is to come. From him who is, who was, and who is to come. Now, John didn't come up with that saying. He started off Revelations when he was recounting his experience uh, in the heavenlies. And, uh, but he didn't come up with that saying. He heard it during that experience. But he, he liked it so much that that's the way he started Revelations when God told him to write down what he'd seen. And, and he says, it's from grace to you, from him who is, who was, and is to come. And then if you skip down to verse 8, uh, it's there again. Uh, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes all around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. So the, the four living creatures... Stated, and they were talking it all the time. Who was, who is, and who is to come. Revelations eleven sixteen and 17. The 24 elders. 
who sat before God on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. Do you think God wanted us to understand that He was, He is, and He is to come? If it's in there that many times and, it, and it's discussed that many by that many different beings, it's got to be. Um, did I just do 16.5? 16, 5. Uh, and I heard the angels, the angels saying, I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is, who was, and who is to be, because you have judged all these things. And it's, it's repeated in, in Hebrews in a different way. Uh, whoever wrote Hebrews said, and, it says the, and he says the same thing in a different way. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God is eternal, okay? And, and because God's eternal, and because, did he say he would give us eternal life? Okay, then, then salvation's eternal. And, and we need to wrap our heads around that a little bit, in my opinion. But uh, before we go, go on any further, we're going to put up another slide. And uh, I'm going to give you some, some things that before we go into the scriptures, I'm going to back it up with scripture, but we're going to look at the PowerPoint first, and then you'll understand what I'm talking about. And I believe it's real important that we get and understand this concept. So if my pointer works, oh, it works. Got to press it hard. Uh, is salvation eternal? Uh, the Bible says we have everlasting life, uh, and, and we either believe it or we don't believe it. Uh, so it, it talks about past, present, and future, okay? And, and how does it talk about it? Well, with God, God says, I was, I is, and I am to come. He was, he is, and he is to come. He will, he's everywhere, okay? And it talks about being saved, about salvation, how many of you know that if you're saved, you have been saved? The Bible talks a lot about having been saved. And we are being saved, right? How many of you are all the way saved? Not sure how to answer some of us, right? Uh, you are being saved. How many of you know you will be saved? Hello? We're going to talk more about it. Now, what are we saved from? We're saved, one of the things we're saved from is sin, right? We're saved from the penalty of sin. We're saved from the power of sin. We're saved from the presence of sin. And what part of us gets saved? Our spirit was saved when we trusted in Christ. Our soul, is anybody's soul all the way saved? Our soul is being saved. And we don't think about it a lot maybe, but our body will be saved one day. Amen? Amen. How many are looking forward to that? I, I wouldn't mind trading this old body off, but, but not that way yet. Uh, but anyway, so we got to understand that th this is a basic biblical principle of salvation, past, present, and future. And, and I want us to understand today that, that I believe in order to, to enjoy the present and the future, we got to understand past salvation. We have been, we are being, and we will be. If we can get these two, these, these right here, then we're going to know. We're going to know that we have eternal life. Amen? You may know that you have eternal life. So go to the next slide. Okay, if, if you don't understand salvation past... Uh, you're going to live in, and I, I did these in a lighter color to kind of take them out of the forefront because this is what we're going to focus on today. Uh, if you don't understand salvation past, then you live now in fear and in pressure and stress and fear of the future. Uh, is, is anybody dealing with any of that? We may not want to raise our hands, but, but a lot of people are dealing with pressure and stress and fear. And that can be from not fully understanding salvation past. Uh, if you understand salvation past, you have peace now and you have faith for the future. 
if, if you uh, don't, you have fear of the future. And many people have fear of the future. But we don't have to because the scripture says that you may know that you have eternal life. And if you know that you have eternal life, and if you know that God loves you, and if you know that he wants nothing but good for you, why would we fear? We're going to talk more about it. What's, what's the next slide? Uh, oh, we did the wrong one. I, I, I redid it, and no, that, no, that's the right one. I, I made that in black because I thought it'd show up better, and I did another one in white, but we got the wrong one up there. That says, if I can read it, If you believe and understand salvation past, you know your future is secure and you will be able to do Philippians 3.13. And Paul said, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what we need to be doing. But if we don't understand salvation past, we may have a hard time doing that. I, I know many, 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 many people who have a hard time really putting the past behind them. In fact, some of, some of you have put the past behind you hundreds of times, but it won't stay there. Hello? We've got to be able to put it there and leave it there if we want... To, to go forward in the way that God wants us to go forward. Uh, I think there's, is there another one? Here's some words that God uses in the Bible. Uh, justified. Notice there's a, an ED on the end of most of these. Uh, I couldn't get an ED there. But, but justified, sanctified, accepted, redeemed, forgiven, forgiven, Okay. Uh, notice those are all past tense. You know, those things happen, uh, you know, when we come to Jesus, but we'll talk more about that later. There's, there's one more that we need to... It's E.D., you know? What did Jesus say on the cross, the last thing he said? He says, it's finished. Okay? It's finished. E.D., it's finished. But do we live like it's finished? Do we have the confidence that it's finished? Do we walk in all the victory that we need to walk in? I think that's the last one. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, see, salvation is not a goal to be achieved. It's a gift to be received. I believe there's some here today that need to receive the gift. And if you don't need to receive the gift, if you are saved and you know you're saved, you may need to, to focus a little more on the fact that salvation is past tense. We are saved. We have been saved. And we're still going to be saved, but we've got to know that we're saved. We've got to have that confidence. We've got to have that peace of mind. So with that knowledge and that setting the, the way that we're going to go, uh, I want you to go to Ephesians 1, verse 3. And as we go through these scriptures, uh, I wish I had it, my notes that I could put up there because I highlight it and I enlarge it and I, I make what I want to stick out at me to stick out at me so I won't forget to talk about it. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go through it. And, and I want you to look not just for EDs, okay, because there's a lot of things that indicate that it's past that don't end in ED. So watch for, for past, past tense as we go through Ephesians. Uh, Blessed be the God of our fathers, the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, what's that? Past tense, who has blessed us. Now, as we go through this, I, I would like for you to personalize it to yourself, okay? Now, it says us, but what's a personal pronoun that you can use to indicate that it's you? Okay, every time we go through one of these, I'm going to give you an opportunity to personalize it. So, uh, who has blessed me? Who has blessed me? 
with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, if, if you're living in salvation past, if you know that you're saved and that that salvation started with eternity and, and waited for you to catch up to it and, and acknowledge it and, and call on the name of the Lord, then, then you get more solid in your salvation, don't you? But when, at that point in time, you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just as He chose is that, what tense is that? Uh, that's past tense. Just as he chose, good, good. As he chose in him before the foundations of the world. That's really past tense, isn't it? How far back did you get chosen? Is salvation eternal? Do we go around thinking about it being that eternal? That we should, that I should, very good, be holy and without blame before Him in love. I mean, if you understand what He did, you're, you're going you're gonna to be that way. Having predestined Having predestined. What does predestined mean? And, and we're not going to get into doctrine here, okay? This isn't about predestination. And there's people that, that argue about that and build doctrines on it and everything else. Predestined simply means that you predetermine something, okay? And, uh, and we could spend hours, probably end up arguing about it. But how many of you know that God predestined you to be where you are today. And, and we have choices and all of that, but we're not going to dwell on the predestination part today. Uh, he predestined to adoption as sons. He intended for you to be a son or a daughter of his before the foundations of the earth. Amen? Now, all of you may have known that before you came in here today, but I don't think you went around thinking about it all day, did you? We need to think about it. We need to understand it. We need to not just say, well, you know, I got saved when I, in 1963, and, and you know, and I, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in 74, and, you know, I finally figured out Jesus was Lord, you know, down the road. We, we got to start saying, I was saved. I was adopted as God's son before the foundations of the world. And, and you can get concerned about, you know, who all that is and how it works and all that. But the main thing is I know that I was adopted as God's son before the foundations of the world. And I know that I was saved before the foundations of the world because God knew it and he adopted me as a son back then. Okay? By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made... Uh, everybody's not participating in that. By which He made... Me. All right, that's better. That's what I want. Accepted, past tense accepted? Accepted in the Beloved. You know, I don't know how many people go around feeling like they, they don't fit in. You know? Uh... I've had people that, that have gone to church here for years and all of a sudden something happens and they say, oh man, I feel like I'm really apart now. Hello? There's people that just don't feel like God accepts them that are still working to get God to accept them. And, and he did, but if, you, if, if you've trusted him, he accepted you before the foundations of the earth. Uh, accepted in the beloved. Verse 7. In him... In Him have redemption right now. You didn't have to earn it. You know, once you came to the, the knowledge of the Word and you, and you confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believed it in your heart, too many times we just think it. We have to believe it in our heart. It's saying it and thinking it and knowing that it's true doesn't do it. It's, it's believing it in your heart. 
I have redemption through his blood. You have it. Once you come to that point, you've had it since the foundations of the earth and, or the world, but when you get to it, you have it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to look for it. You have it. Amen. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. When were your sins forgiven? They were forgiven with Jesus on the cross. But he determined to do that, and there's a scripture that says that I'm not, I don't remember whether I got it in here or not. There's a scripture that says that he was predetermined to take those sins on the cross in the fullness of time. And that was the fullness of time when he came and did it. Amen? Uh, but, but he didn't just decide to do it when he got here. It was the plan all along. Okay? Uh, I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us. Towards me. Come again. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. He made to abound towards me. In all wisdom and prudence. Now, made, is that, when did, he made, when did he made that? If he made you do it, when did he make you do it? He made it to abound to you. I think that's past tense. It doesn't say he's making it abound to you or he will make it abound to you. It says he made it to abound to me in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to me the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Get this, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Do you have an inkling of what that means? He's going to gather together into one the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth. How many of you got something up in heaven? Huh? We got loved ones. We have most of all our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to gather everything in earth and in heaven that's his together into one. Amen. And it's going to be a glorious party. Amen? Yeah. And it ain't going to be about you or me. It's going to be about Him. Amen? We're going to be crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who always was, who always is, and who always will be to come. Amen? And we're going to be thanking Him that, that He saved us so thoroughly and so perfectly and so beautifully. And, and it's going to be good. In Him... In Him, I, in Him, have obtained, past tense, an inheritance. How many of you think of an inheritance as something in the future? Hello? Somebody has to die before you can get your inheritance if you've got a rich uncle, right? He's got to die before you get it. Well, our rich uncle's already died. So we have obtained the inheritance. It is ours now. Amen. That's, it's ours already. Uh, being predestined again, past tense, according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, that we... Come on. That I, who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. And, and I have trusted circled in, in a big circle in my notes because that's key. You see, you can't, you can't trust in salvation past unless you've trusted in Him. That's where salvation is. It's then when we come to that place where we realize we don't really know Him personally and we don't really have a relationship and we've known about him all of our life. My wife has a neat testimony. She grew up in another denomination that didn't really give invitations and, and stuff. And, and, uh, and she 
didn't know that she wasn't saved until after we were married when she was 30 years old. Uh, in fact, some, some people came by from a denominational church and, and did a new visit with us because we were new in town. And they asked, after they visited and invited us to their church, they asked me, they said, are you saved? I said, yes, I am. And they asked her, and she said, what do you mean? Well, do you, do you know Jesus Christ as the Son of God? And, she, and in her heart, and her testimony, she says, they think I'm a heathen. And, and she said, well, of course I do. And so they said, well, thank you very much, and they left, not knowing that she just knew about him. And she knew that he was the Son of God, but she didn't have a relationship with him. She never trusted him with her life. And that's what salvation is. Trust is a, is a big part, the biggest part. Uh, trusted in Christ that, that I who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Verse 13, in him also trusted after heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, past tense, was, what's that word? Sealed. I was sealed. Oh, it's not up there yet. I ran off, I ran off and left her. We're in uh, Ephesians 1, 13. Did I do it wrong? They got to see this. I'm sorry if I messed it up. There it is. In him. Also trusted. We're going to do it again. After. Heard the word of truth of the gospel of my salvation. In whom also having believed past tense. Was sealed. Past tense, E-D, sealed. You're not going to be sealed. You don't have to do anything else to get sealed except trust and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is, see that's present tense, who is the guarantee, of course he was too, and he will be, okay? The guarantee of my inheritance until the redemption of me. The redemption of me. Thank you. The purchased, past tense, purchased possession. Are, are y'all getting this at all? The purchased possession. Past tense. When did you get purchased? The plan was before the foundations of the earth and, and Jesus bought us back. He bought us back a second time, okay? On the cross. Purchased possessions to the praise and the glory. That's our heritage. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians 6.19. I don't know if I got this one on there, did I? I'll just read it to you. 6.19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you and that you are not your own? Uh, you were bought with a price. You are, uh, I can't read my writing, to glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God's. You're not your own. You don't belong to you. You don't even have any rights if you really get down to it except for his rights, okay? And his blessings and his love that he gets you. Uh, and, and going down to 1 Corinthians 7, you don't have to put this one up there. It says, you were bought with a price. Don't become a slave of men. You know, we can't be men pleasers. We are a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ and he owns us because he bought us back. Uh, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you, all right, y'all are getting it now. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you 
once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also once conducted, let's, let's do the I there, among whom also once conducted myself in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Do you understand that, that in Isaiah, God says, my wrath will no longer come against you in the, under the new covenant of the blood of my son. That's a loose paraphrase, but that's what it says. And, and so until you came to the place where you trusted Jesus and were saved, past tense, you could be under God's wrath. But once you are saved, going retroactive to the cross and to the beginning of time, you're not subject to God's wrath. You're subject to his love. He has a covenant with you. And he said, my wrath won't come against you. If anything bad comes against you, it's not from me, he said. How many of you know bad things come against us even when we're in the covenant? Amen. But they don't come from God. God uses them to glorify his name and to make sure that we get where he wants us to be. But he doesn't send them to you or bring them to you. They're not from him. Amen? Uh, Verse 4, but God, who is, who was, who is, and who will to come, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved, even when was dead in trespasses, made alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised up together, and made me and made to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hello? That in the ages to come, now we're talking future, but in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards me in Christ Jesus. Those are all the things he wants for you. He has for you. He's given to you. They're yours and they're all past tense once you come and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior and place your trust in him and develop a relationship with him. You got a lot of Bible learning and studying and growing and, and biblical words to, to know of his to, 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 for it all to come together and for your life to totally change. But you have everything you need. The Bible says that, that he gave us everything pertaining to life and godliness when? When we got saved before the foundations of the earth. He made it available to us. Now it's ours to discover and to take hold of. Amen? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, neither idolaters, neither adulterers, neither homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were, what is were? Past tense. And such were some of you, but was washed but was sanctified, but was justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of my God. Amen? Uh, Dennis says, you know, I'm preaching better than y'all are getting it sometimes. Uh, look at Luke 15. This, this might help you understand what I'm saying a little bit. What, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and the nine and go to the wilderness after the one which he lost until he finds it? And when he found it, he lays it on his shoulders. And what does he do? He's rejoicing. 
And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. In case you don't know it and aren't putting it together, you were the sheep that he rejoiced over. Amen? And he planned it from a long way back. Amen? He says, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 per just persons who need no repentance. What's the, what's the, what, what happens when you find something that, that you, you lost? You rejoice. Huh? Do you really? Well, let, let me rephrase the question a little bit. What, what's the first thing that happens when you find something that's lost? You know, we got a, we got a saying that's kind of stupid, but, but we say, well, it'll probably be in the last place I look. Well, of course it will. You found it. You know? If I lose my glasses and, and I walk around, and I walk around, you ever lost your glasses? It's easier for me now. My eyes are getting better. But, but I, I lose them and I walk around and I find them and I put them on and I'm still looking for them. <laughs> and, and you come, you see me and you say, well, um, what, what are you looking for? Well, I, I'm looking for my glasses. Well, you got them on. I, I know, but I'm still looking for them. <laughs> huh? Some of us are still looking for salvation and we already got it. Amen. And if you're looking for it, you don't understand salvation past. It's him. To me, this was a, an aha moment. And, and, and I have a pretty good understanding of what Jesus did for me. And he made me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and, and all the stuff that goes with it. And, but, but still, when I started studying this and saw this, uh, I think it's significant. But, but some of us, see, are here today and... Uh, and we really, well, there, I think there's two kinds of things today. I think one is there's people here that are going to realize through this message that, that they aren't saved. And some of, them, some of you may have thought you were saved and, and realize as we talk about it that maybe even if you are, you didn't fully understand it and you may want to do an if never before and go all the way back you know, and, and receive it for yourself and, and, and be absolutely sure you got it. You know, if there's any question in your mind that you're not saved, you can do the same thing I did years ago and just do an if never before prayer. God, if never before, right this minute, I want to trust you as my personal Lord and Savior. And you only have to do that once when you mean it and you know you mean it, okay? That's a one-time thing because uh, when he finds you, you don't have to go hunting for him. And when you're saved, you don't have to keep looking for salvation. You've got it. Amen? And you've had it. And it's eternal. Frontwards and backwards, it's eternal. And there's a lot more stuff in there that we could study and there's a lot more stuff we could get a hold of. But if you're not saved, you need to be saved. And you need to do it today. There's no, no point in putting it off. Uh, so if, if that's you, if you don't know for sure that you're, you would go to heaven if you died today, then I want to give you the opportunity to settle it right now, once and for all. Amen? And that's what it is. It's a once-for-all choice. It's a once-for-all decision. So if that's you, uh, I'd like you just to raise your hand right where you're sitting and hold it up for a minute. There's one. Amen. There's two. Three. Anybody else? Four. Okay. There's another one. Anybody else? There's another one right there. Okay, I have trouble seeing them all. Okay, I'm going to lead you just in a, in, a, in a prayer. And you can pray it out loud or you can pray it in your heart. It's kind of good for you to pray it out loud and hear yourself say it to tell you the truth. But you don't have to. But just, just follow me in this and assuming that it's the desire of your heart. Just say, Father, if never before, right this minute, I choose to trust you as my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe all of my sins were forgiven at that point by His blood. And I want to surrender my life 
to you right now, Jesus. And I want you to show me how to live for you. Teach me how to be what you created me for and how to walk in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, my Bible says, if you prayed that prayer, that you instantly became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And all those things, amen, amen. And all those things, can, can you pop that slide back up there that has all those good words on it that end in E-D? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the one that, uh, that says the words, the list. There it is right there. The instant you prayed that prayer, You became justified, sanctified, accepted in the beloved, redeemed, and forgiven. Amen? Amen. That's what God did for you the minute that you acknowledged him and prayed that prayer of salvation. And and if you latch on to that and and accept it and believe it and start studying your Bible, those things will be part of your life and they will change your life. They'll change your desires. They'll change your actions. Uh, It takes a little time sometimes, but Miss Laurie will will help you, and, and if you're not with Ms. Laurie, God will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. But when you get that inside of you, it changes you. And sometimes it takes a long time, like it did me, but it can, take, it, it can be a shorter time if you pursue him with your whole heart. If you seek him first, it can be a real short time. We have one gentleman that, that's only been saved for a couple of weeks, and he's growing like a weed, and he's asking questions, and he's studying all the time, and he's getting together with people to disciple him and coach him. And that's the way you grow, uh, is, to, is to be discipled and to stay in the Word and, and, and get, get more knowledge of God in His Word. Amen? And anybody else that, uh, that hasn't been sure, that, that wants to just, just say, God, thank you for showing me, and, and I'm going to latch on to it and believe it and hold on to I'm saved, period. Anybody? Amen. All right, well, we have a baptism today. Uh, We'll have uh, some folks up here. If you need prayer after the service, feel free to come. And uh, we're going to adjourn to the horse trough. Is lunch ready? Does anybody know? Yeah, it's ready here. Okay, well, the line for lunch is over here, and if you're a visitor for the first time, you can go to the front of the line. And uh, and we're going to enjoy the rest of the day. Amen? Amen. So I'll see. We're, I guess we're going to do the baptism before. One more thing. Mm-hmm. If that DVD spoke to your heart and you would like to buy a gift for um, a little one for this Christmas, I'm going to be out in the foyer. Um, and you can pick out a child to buy a gift for. So you can sign up with me out there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, how do you know when you're in a cowboy church? Y'all come back now, you hear?